Question 1. What is the longest distance that electrical metallic tubing can go between supports? 10 feet. 8 feet. 4 feet. 20 feet. Answer is A. 10 feet. Look up EMT in the NEC in Article 358. 358.30 indicates that we cannot go further than 10 feet between supports. Remember that all of the wiring methods, such as EMT are in Chapter 3, wiring methods and it should not be too hard to find ND. You can also look it up in the table of contents or index. Better yet, memorize 358 for the most popular PV wiring method in the US. Question 2. How many stranded 10 AWG used 2 slash RHW2 conductors will fit into EMT? 18. 30. 8. 4. Answer is B. 30. Next, we will go to Chapter 9, Table 5, Dimensions of Insulated Conductors and Pfizer Wires to figure out the cross-sectional area of 10 AWG RHW2. We can see that 10 AWG RHW2 has a cross-sectional area of 0.0437 and 2. Now we just do simple division to see how many phi t. 1.342 and 2, 0.0437 and 2 equals 30.7. Question 3. On a four-wire, delta-connected system where the midpoint of one phase winding is grounded, what color should the ungrounded conductor with the highest voltage to ground be? This is also known as the high leg. Orange. Red. Blue. Black. Answer is A. Orange. A high leg is common on 240 120ths of a volt three phase systems and sometimes referred to as a stinger. At times, electricians have measured a hot wire to ground and found 120 volts and thought they were dealing with 120 volts for all of the ungrounded conductors to ground. However, the high leg will be 208 volts and will often damage 120 volts loads that are connected to it. If you see orange, think not 120 volts. Question 4. If you have 15 plus 250 watt microinverters on a cable at 240 volts and a frequency of 60 hertz, then what would be the minimum copper wire size for the 90C rated cable in a location with a high design temperature of 28C? 8AWG 14AWG 10AWG 12AWG Answer is D. 12AWG First, calculate the current of each microinverter, which is 250 watts, 240 volts equals 1.04A. Then, multiply by number of microinverters on the cable. 1.04A x 15 inverters equals 15.6A. The temperature is under 30C, so no need to derate for ambient temperature here. I would also assume that, in this situation, the microinverter cable is going to a circuit breaker. Additionally, we will assume that this microinverter cable, like most is not in conduit. We will use table 310.15B, 16, since a microinverter cable will have multiple conductors in it and 310.15B, 17, is for single insulated cable. Multiply 15.6 at x 1.25 get circuit breaker size equals 19.5A. 19.5 A rounds up to a 20A circuit breaker. Question 5. When installing PV source circuits in a rigid PVC conduit outside a building what should be done regarding an equipment grounding conductor? Equipment grounding conductor is not required. Equipment grounding conductor should be run inside the rigid PVC. Bare copper equipment grounding conductor should be run on the outside of the rigid PVC. Insulated equipment grounding conductor should be run on the outside of the rigid PVC. Answer is B. Equipment grounding conductor should be run inside the rigid PVC. It is acceptable to use rigid PVC for PV source circuits on the outside of a building. We can find ND out about the wiring methods for rigid PVC in Chapter 3, Wiring Methods Article 352, Rigid Polyvinyl Chloride Conduit, Type PVC. It does not take too long to skim through Article 352 and we can see that 352.60, grounding tells us that the equipment grounding conductor should be run inside of the conduit. An equipment grounding conductor is required for PV systems on rooftops. There are many other things we can easily look up in Article 352, such as Coefi science of expansion, how far apart supports should be, and locations where we can install the conduit. Question 6. What is the required depth and width of working space in front of a 8 wide 120 slash 240 vac disconnect? 3 feet 6, 8 width. 3 feet depth, 30 width. 30, 30 width. 3 feet depth, 3 feet width. Answer is B. 3 feet depth, 30 width. 110.26, 
spaces about electrical equipment is where to look and a good thing to memorize. For the depth of working space, we can look to table 110.26a, 1, and for a 120 vast system, we have 120 volts as voltage to ground, so under any condition, a required depth of working space is 3 feet. 110.26a, 2, width of working space tells us that the width should be the width of the equipment or 30, whatever is greater. While we are at it, the height of a working space around equipment should be at least 6 and a half feet or the height of the equipment, whichever is greater. Question 7. An older inverter breaks and you replace it with a newer inverter. What must you check before replacing the inverter? Make sure that the inverter MPP voltage window matches the voltage of the PV source circuit. Make sure that you do not replace a grounded inverter with an ungrounded inverter. Make sure that you do not replace an ungrounded inverter with a grounded inverter. Check to see if the new inverter does not have DC arc fault protection if you are replacing an inverter without DC arc fault protection. Answer is A. Make sure that the inverter MPP voltage window matches the voltage of the PV source circuit. The best answer here is to check that the inverter MPP voltage window matches the voltage of the PV source circuit. This can be done with string sizing, to make sure that the inverter will stay on during a hot day. Additionally, we should check for the maximum voltage to make sure that the inverter voltage does not go over the voltage limit of the inverter on a cold day. For the wrong answers here, just think that the code is probably not going to prevent our doing something safer, such as replacing a grounded inverter with an ungrounded inverter or installing an inverter with DC arc fault protection. Question 8. An arc flash hazard warning should be placed on equipment that may require servicing. Within 7 of equipment. While energized. Below DC disconnect label. By qualified persons. Answer is B. While energized. The best answer can be found in 110.16a, arc FL ash hazard warning. Arc FL ashes are more likely when working on energized equipment. Arc FL ash hazard warning labels should be put on equipment such as anything that requires examination, adjustment, servicing, maintenance. Arc FL ashes are most likely on equipment that is subject to higher available currents. Question 9. You are using typical 60 cell framed polycrystalline modules and notice at the worksite that the instructions that came with the modules in the pallet only have instructions for installing with mounting holes and you have a design for typical top clamps that are UL 2703 listed. What should you do? Install modules with top clamps only after getting written permission from top clamp manufacturer. Install modules with both top clamps and mounting holes. Install with top clamps that are UL 2703 listed on site. Only install modules according to module instructions. Answer is D. Only install modules according to module instructions. You must always follow instructions. In the NEC, following instructions is covered in 110.3b. Although the top clamp system may be better and more widely used, if the modules were not UL listed and tested with top clamps, then you cannot use them. If you installed with both top clamps and mounting holes, that would definitely not be how they were listed and tested. Question 10. Which of the following is an example of a dead load? HVAC. Snow. Wind. Solar installer. Answer is A. HVAC. A dead load is something that is permanent, such as HVAC, a solar array, or roofing materials. Temporary things, such as workers and snow are considered a live load. Wind is a wind load. Question 11. The ashray is important in the solar industry because, among other things, ASHRAE has important data for firefighters in determining how to put out fires on buildings with solar and energy storage installations. ASHRAE has insulation data, which determines viability for solar installations. Local building codes adopt ASHRAE data for determining wind speed. Neural uses ASHRAE data for calculating KWH KWP year. Answer is C. Local building codes adopt ASHRAE data for determining wind speed. American Society of Heating Refrigeration Air Conditioning Engineers, ASHRAE, collects data about weather that we often use when designing solar systems. We can determine wind data, temperature data, including low and high temperatures. Most often installers are used to getting the ASHRAE design temperatures for calculating string sizing and determining ambient temperatures. Just think of information that would help someone designing heating, refrigeration, and air conditioning systems and that information is put together by ASHRAE. It is interesting that although ASHRAE is American the data are also compiled for other parts of the world. Question 12. Which is the most important for the AHJ, building department, when deciding to approve a permit? 200 kilowatts PV system fire pathways. 
Interconnection agreements. Utility transformer size. Energy forecast. Answer is A. 200 kilowatts PV system fire pathways. The AHJ, building department, should be mostly concerned about fire reason safety, so fire re pathways on a large system would be very important. Utility aspects of a system, such as interconnection agreements and utility transformers, are also important, but are more the domain of the utility. Production forecasting is important, too, but the AHJ usually does not fret about performance, since it is not their job. Question 13. In an east-facing roof area with an installable area of 20 feet 6x 11 feet 9, 20 feet 6 being the north to south dimension, how many 39x 66 modules fit portrait and landscape? Assume one spaces between modules. 12 portrait, 9 landscape. 12 portrait, 12 landscape. 9 portrait, 9 landscape. 15 portrait, 12 landscape. Answer is A. 12 portrait, 9 landscape. Since this is an east-facing array, then the north to south dimension is the width of the array. Since it says an installable area, we are going to assume that we do not need to account for fire resetbacks. With a one space between modules, we will have one less space than there are number of modules, because you do not need a space at the end. For example, if you had three modules, you would need only two spaces between modules. This type of calculation is not difficult, but is time-consuming when done within a time test, and this can lead to mistakes. Question 14. A tree is directly south of your solar array and is 20 feet tall. You are at 38 degrees latitude and there is a flat rooftop that is 25 feet high. The closest part of the tree to the solar array is 30 feet away. If the tree will grow 2 feet per year, how long until the tree is shading the array? 4.5 years. 16.3 years. 10.5 years. 8.15 years. Answer is C. 10.5 years. This is a trigonometry question. If you have no idea about trigonometry, you can still take a guess and still pass the exam. Many people are trigophobic. The plan here is to figure out how far above current tree height the tree has to be to shade the PV and then to determine the years of growth at a rate of 2 feet per year we have to wait until the tree is a problem. At a growth rate of 2 feet per year to grow 21.3 feet, we can divide 2 feet into 21.3 feet to get 21.3 feet slash 2 feet per year equals 10.65 years. Question 15. In a seaside community, what is the best way of the following to attach a PV system to a composition asphalt shingle roof? Brass screws into sheathing. Galvanized steel hanger bolts with a socket wrench. Zinc plated bolts with an adjustable setting impact wrench. Stainless steel lag bolts with a torque wrench. Answer is D. Stainless steel lag bolts with a torque wrench. Especially in a seaside location, which may be wet and where corrosion may speed up due to the moisture, it is recommended to use stainless steel hardware to fasten a solar system to a roof. Additionally, when installing the lag bolts and when installing many things, you are supposed to use a torque wrench. In practice, many people do not use a torque wrench when they should. You should even use a torque screwdriver when you attach a wire to a circuit breaker. In an overview of the wrong answers here, zinc plating is recommended for indoors, whereas hot dip galvanizing is more appropriate for outdoors. Stainless steel is, however, superior to galvanized. You are likely to see some galvanized racks on utility-scale PV projects, since it is cost-saving and you are more likely to see galvanized farther away from the sea. Question 16. If you are going to bury DC to DC converter source circuits under a parking lot, how deep must you bury the circuits that are in rigid metal conduit? 36. 24. 12. 18. Answer is B. 24. NEC Table 300.5, Minimum Cover Requirements is where you will find the answer. Think of Chapter 3, Wiring Methods and Materials and Article 300, General Requirements for Wiring Methods and Materials, and you will have it covered. Without knowing to look at Table 300.5, you would just have to take a guess. You can also see here that every wiring method under a parking lot is 24. Question 17. When you increase the size of a conductor cross-sectional area by 33% for voltage drop, how much must you increase the size of the corresponding equipment grounding conductor? 16.5% 50% 33% 0% Answer is D. 0% When upsizing a conductor for voltage drop, you do not need to upsize the equipment grounding conductor. This is covered in 690.45, Size of Equipment Grounding Conductors, which tells you to use Table 250.122, where you will size your equipment grounding conductor, 
EGC, based on the size of the overcurrent protection device. On another note, when we are not required to have an overcurrent protection device, such as when we have one or two PV source circuits, strings, going to a single MPP, then 690.45 directs us to use 690.9B, which is essentially telling us to use 125% of maximum circuit currents, which means ISC X 1.56 in place of the overcurrent protection device, which makes sense, since that is how we would determine an overcurrent protection device size. Question 18. You are using an inverter that allows for energy storage backup and the backup circuit on a house is 120 volts. In taking the 120 volts backup circuit and putting it on a panel board that is rated for 120 of a volt, you put the two bus bars, L1 and L2, together to make the panel board ready for the 120 volt circuit. You then run the circuits that you are going to back up to the new panel board for the backed up loads. What should you do with the multi-wire branch circuits that you are going to back up? Pull multi-wire branch circuits through the entrance to the panel board carefully. Upsize the multi-wire branch circuits neutral wire. Remove the multi-wire branch circuits. Put up a sign indication that there are 120 volts multi-wire branch circuits. Answer is C. Remove the multi-wire branch circuits. A multi-wire branch circuit, in this case, is a conductor that has two different 120 volt circuits that share a neutral. When these circuits are on a 120-240ths of a volt panel board, the two different circuits will be out of phase with one another and the currents on the neutral will cancel one another out. If we change these circuits to being in phase with one another, then the neutral currents would add up rather than cancelling one another out. In the 2014 NEC, we would phi ND the rule for this in Article 690, however, now it is in the new Article 710, Standalone Systems. Section 710.15c, single 120 volt supply tells us that we can use 120-240ths of a volt service equipment when there are no multi-wire branch circuits. We would also need a sign saying, warning, single 120 volt supply. Do not connect multi-wire branch circuits. Question 19. Your PV system will initially have a 83% derating when converting from kWh slash square meter per day to kWh slash kWp slash day and on top of that, since you are tilted at latitude plus 15 degrees degrees, there is an additional 10% loss. How many kW of PV is required to offset 70% of your use if you use 22,000 kilowatt hours per year in a location with a daily average insulation of 5.3 kilowatt hours slash square meter slash day? 10.7 kilowatts. 5.5 kilowatts. 22.9 kilowatts. 3.1 kilowatts. Answer is A. 10.7 kilowatts. If we want to offset 70% of 22,000 kilowatt hours per year, we can phi RST phi gore out what 70% of 22,000 is, 0 0.7 by 22,000 kilowatt hours equals 15,400 kilowatt hours. Now we want to phi gore out how many kWh a single kW of PV will make in these conditions. Since 1 kW of PV will make 1,445 kilowatt hours per year and we need to make 15,400 kWh per year, we can just divide our kWh made by a kW into the number of k. WS we need to make to get KWS required to install in order to make that much energy. 15,400 kilowatt hours per year slash 1,445 kilowatt hours slash KWP slash year equals 10.7 kilowatts required. Question 20. Which of the following is not true about equalizing batteries? Equalizing is used to reduce stratification in many flooded lead acid batteries. Equalizing is used to reduce stratification in sealed flooded lead acid batteries. Equalizing is done by increasing voltage. Equalizing is done to prevent lead sulfate crystals from building up on the battery plates. Answer is B. Equalizing is used to reduce stratification in sealed flooded lead acid batteries. If there is a question that says which one is not, then that must mean that 3 out of 4 possible answers are true. Equalizing is done by increasing voltage and causing water molecules to be split into hydrogen and oxygen gas molecules in the form of bubbles. These bubbles stir up the battery acid, getting rid of stratify cation. Stratify cation is when the heavier molecules rest at the bottom of the battery cells. Additionally, the bubbles rising will scrape the lead sulfate crystals off of the lead plates. You typically only equalize batteries that you can add FL UID to in order to make up for the loss in water molecules that are split into hydrogen and oxygen. We will add distilled water to the maintenance on these batteries to extend their life. A sealed battery is considered maintenance-free and we are unable to do equalization on a sealed battery since it would end up drying out prematurely. Question 21. 
In which of the following cases is PV array DC ground fault protection not required? A single module using a microinverter on a house. In areas without lightning if there is an additional auxiliary grounding electrode. On one and two family dwellings. Two strings on a solidly grounded ground mounted array used to pump water. Answer is D. Two strings on a solidly grounded ground mounted array used to pump water. According to 690.41b, ground fault protection exception. PV arrays with not more than two PV source circuits and with all PV system DC circuits not on or in buildings shall be permitted without ground fault protection were solidly grounded. Although there is this exception, it is not used by most installers, since solidly grounded PV systems are rare. One of the ways that a solidly grounded system is used would be a direct water pumping system. Most modern equipment, such as inverters, have ground fault protection. Question 22. Which of the following should be part of a grounding electrode system if it is present at the building? Metal fences and fence posts. Metal water pipes. Metal flagpole. Metal gas pipe. Answer is B. Metal water pipes. Article 250, Grounding and Bonding. Part 3, Grounding Electrode System and Grounding Electrode Conductor is where you should start looking to learn about grounding electrodes. This part starts with 250.50, Grounding Electrode System where we are told that if a metal water pipe, metal in-ground support structure, concrete encased electrode, ground ring, other listed electrodes, and plate electrodes should all be connected as part of a grounding electrode system. Gas pipes are not permitted to be part of the electrode system. Question 23. Of the following, which is the smallest size conduit that can be used for 2210 AWGU's 2-RHW2 PV source circuits inside an attic? 1 EMT 2 EMT 2.5 EMT 1.5 EMT. Answer is C. 2.5 EMT. Since all of the conductors are the same size, it would be easiest to use informative Annex C, Table C.1, however, we could still have used Chapter 9, Tables 1, 4, and 5. At the beginning of Table C.1 is RHW2. Use 2 is not in the table. The wire is dual listed and we are using the RHW2 for this exercise. We look at 10 AWG on the left side of the table and then go right until we find ND the right number of conductors. The trick here is that with 22 PV source circuits, we will have 44 conductors, a positive and a negative for each circuit. When we go right, we can see that 2 can hold 30 conductors and 2.5 can hold 53 conductors, so 2 is too small and 2.5 is the correct answer. Question 24. You are called to a job site to look at an inverter and you measure the voltage from positive to ground and it is 0 volts and voltage from negative to ground is 408 volts. Which of the following could be correct? It is a solidly grounded inverter with a loose connection from positive to negative. It is a non-isolated inverter working properly. It could be a positive grounded system or have a positive ground fault. There is a positive to negative short circuit. Answer is C. It could be a positive grounded system or have a positive ground fault. This could be a positively grounded system that is in perfect condition and it could also be a PV system that has a positive ground fault. If there were a loose connection from positive to negative, it could be intermittent shorting and shorting itself would measure zero volts from positive to negative. A non-isolated inverter, formerly known as an ungrounded inverter in the 2014 NEC, would measure the same voltage to ground from negative or positive. Ground would be in the middle. We are unlikely to see a new system that is positively grounded, however, there are many out there that we may be troubleshooting. Question 25. You have inverter detected ground faults that show up more on hot days. What could be a possible explanation? Pinched wire between module frame and rack. Inverter output circuit wire insulation flaw. Bad MC4 connector. Blown string fuse. Answer is A. Pinched wire between module frame and rack. On a hot day, the insulation of a wire can be less likely to protect the wire and could lead to ground faults. It is common to have ground faults from pinched wires from sloppy installations with bad wire management. You could also get the same ground faults on wet days. Inverters do not typically measure ground faults on inverter output circuits, they detect DC ground faults. A bad MC4 connector is less likely to cause a ground fault than a pinched wire. A blown string fuse would be a sign of a short circuit, not a ground fault. Question 26. If you detect an intermittent ground fault, what would be the best course of action? Insulation testing. Replace cable ties. Insulation testing. Upsize equipment grounding conductor. Answer is C. Insulation testing. On a modern inverter, 
the inverter will do a test that is very similar to an insulation test, which is like a quick pulse of voltage and then testing the resistance of the insulation by comparing the conductor to ground. If there is not enough resistance, then there is a problem with the insulation. A trade name that is often used for insulation testing is a mega test. The insulation test would be the best course of action. Changing the inverter would not phi x a ground fault. Upsizing the equipment grounding conductor would not phi x a ground fault. Replacing cable ties would probably not help much either. Question 27. During an O&M call, you find a string that has slightly higher current than the other two strings on the inverter. The inverter has three strings going to a single MPP. You then turn the inverter off and the string that had higher current appears to still have higher current and the other two strings shut off. You are also looking at the monitoring and notice that about three weeks earlier the inverter started making about 35% less energy that would be expected. What is your diagnosis of this situation and what might you expect to find? There are likely two ground faults on the strings without the higher currents. There must be a ground fault on the string with the higher current. The string with the higher current has a positive to negative fault and I would expect to find a blown fuse in a combiner. There may be a bad connector or a connector that is not making contact, leaving one string not to produce power. Answer is C. The string with the higher current has a positive to negative fault and I would expect to find a blown fuse in a combiner. After a short circuit, fault, positive to negative of a string, it is likely that there will be a blown fuse and the shorted string would keep on shorting. It is also a situation where the inverter would keep on producing power with the strings that are not shorted out. In this situation, the shorted string would have slightly higher current, since it would be at ISK, rather than IMP. Ground faults would make the inverter shut down and there would be no power expected. A bad connector would have no current, rather than slightly higher current. Question 28. What is the purpose of 690.12, rapid shutdown? Preventing shock. Firefighter safety. Employee safety. Preventing fires. Answer is B. Firefighter safety. 690.12, rapid shutdown of PV systems on buildings is for fire refeeder safety. Employees would have time to properly shut down a system to work on it and employees should already be educated on PV systems. It has been said that fire refeeders will avoid putting out fireries on houses with PV, since they do not understand how they work and have heard that they can still have dangerous voltage after the power to the building has been cut off. With rapid shutdown, the fire refeaters know that they can read a sign, hit a switch, and see that the array is safe. Another answer here is shock and it could be a good answer if fire refeater safety were not on the list, since we do not want fire refeaters to be shocked, however, fire refeater safety is the best answer. Rapid shutdown was not intended to prevent fireries, it was intended for fire refeater safety. Question 29. You are changing an old fuse grounded inverter with a new non-isolated inverter. The old inverter has used two wire on the modules and a single fuse on the positive in the combiner. What must you do? You cannot install the new inverter if there is used two wire on the modules. You must install fuses on both positive and negative polarities. Replace the inverter, keep the used two wire, and make sure the disconnect opens both positive and negative. Replace the inverter with a fuse grounded inverter, which is easy to get. Answer is C. Replace the inverter, keep the used two wire, and make sure the disconnect opens both positive and negative. In the 2014 NEC days, the correct answer would have been A, however according to the 2017 NEC, the right answer is C. The 2014 NEC made it more difficult to replace the inverter with a safer inverter than with the less safe fuse grounded inverter. This is why we are now allowed to use used two wire on formerly known as ungrounded non-isolated inverters. This also goes for the single polarity fuse. We do not want people to go looking for fuse grounded inverters or having to replace an entire solar array, because the older, less safe inverter broke. Question 30. For a free fall of how many feet is fall protection required? 10. 6. 12. 6.5. Answer is B. 6. You should always know that fall protection is required at 6 feet. Question 31. According to OSHA, heavy equipment operators should. Always wear a personal fall arrest system. Be trained and certified by their employer. Be trained and certified by OSHA. Have a heavy equipment license. Answer is B. Be trained and certified by their employer. OSHA says that a heavy equipment operator should be trained and certified by their employer. Fall protection is not required by most jobs. Fall protection is required where someone may fall 6 feet. Question 32. The arc fault detection light is blinking on an inverter. 
you find that the connectors appear melted between two modules. What is the most likely problem? Squirrel living under array. Improperly installed connectors. Cold temperatures below 40 C. Snow and rain. Answer is B. Improperly installed connectors. An arc fault in this case would most likely be caused by improperly installed connectors. If the connectors were not clicked into place, it could cause an arc fault. A squirrel would be a good second choice answer, but it may be difficult for a squirrel to unlock a properly installed connector, what tool could it use? Cold temperatures will probably not cause this type of problem and also unlikely would be snow and rain. Question 33. Bad insulation around a wire with cracks would likely lead to? Voltage drop. Ground fault. Decrease in ampacity. Increased insulation resistance. Answer is B. Ground fault. Cracking and problems with the insulation of the wire will likely lead to a decreased insulation resistance and ground faults. Ampacity and voltage drop are characteristics that are controlled by the copper or aluminum part of the wire, not the insulation. Question 34. Battery storage systems shall have, according to the NEC label with weight of the batteries. Illumination not controlled by automatic means only. Goggles on site at all times. An energy storage maintenance logbook on site at all times out together by a qualified person. Answer is B. Illumination not controlled by automatic means only. 480.10G, Illumination states that illumination shall be provided for working spaces containing battery systems. Illumination cannot be controlled by automatic means only. The word goggles is not in the NEC. We are not required to weigh the batteries, however, we should label the battery bank with the nominal voltage, maximum short circuit current, and date short circuit current calculation was performed. An energy storage logbook and goggles would be good ideas, but are not required. Question 35. Which is three-phase 240 delta with a high leg wire colors? Black, red, blue, white, green. Black, red, white, green. Black, orange, blue, white, green. Brown, orange, yellow, gray. Answer is C. Black, orange, blue, white, green. Question 36. What are the usual wire colors for 277-483 phase power? Black, red, blue, white. Black, orange, yellow, gray. Brown, orange, yellow, gray. Black, orange, yellow, black. Answer is C. Brown, orange, yellow, gray. When you think of an orange wire, think that you could be working with something more dangerous. Orange is not only the stinger for 240 delta high leg, it is also present with 480 volts power. Brown is line 1, orange is line 2, yellow is line 3, and gray is the neutral. We are used to neutral being white, but it can be gray and in this case with 277 480, neutral is gray. Question 37. At what point would rigid PVC require expansion joints if expansion is over? One quarter or greater. Half or greater. Three quarters or greater. One or greater. Answer is A. One quarter or greater. To learn about different wiring methods, go to Chapter 3, Wiring Methods and Materials and then Phi ND Article 352, Rigid Polyvinyl Chloride Conduit, Type PVC. 354.44, Expansion Fightings tells us that with one quarter or greater expansion, we will be required to have expansion fightings. Question 38. Which type of electrode is unacceptable? Concrete encased electrode. Steel frame of a building. Copper wire buried around house. Aluminum ground rod. Answer is D. Aluminum ground rod. Look to 250.52, grounding electrodes. Then you will see 250.53B, not permitted for use as grounding electrodes and you will see that there are three things listed. 1. Metal underground gas piping systems. 2. Aluminum. 3. The structures and structural reinforcing steel described in 680.26b, 1, and, b2. Article 680 like Article 690 is in Chapter 6, Special Equipment and Article 680 only has to do with swimming pools, so we will be more concerned about aluminum here, which is, plain and simple, not allowed as an electrode. Question 39. What is the required width of working space in front of a PV system AC disconnecting means? The width of the AC disconnecting means are 30, whichever is less. 30. The width of the AC disconnect or 30, whichever is greater. The width of the equipment, 
Answer is C. The width of the AC disconnect or 30, whichever is greater. 110.26a, 2, width of working space says. The width of the working space in front of the electrical equipment shall be the width of the equipment or 30 inches, whichever is greater. In all cases, the workspace shall permit at least a 90 degree opening of equipment doors or hinged panels. Question 40. Which of the following is typically the best solution for making wires inaccessible on a ground mount? Security guards. The neighbor's electric fence. Covering over the backs of modules. Alarm system. Answer is C. Covering over the backs of modules. The exposed wiring between modules and along the backs of arrays should be inaccessible. For a ground mount, this usually means erecting a fence. Another acceptable method is covering the backs of the modules so that the wires are inaccessible. Other methods include putting a lattice structure from the sides of the modules down to the ground. The neighbor's electric fence is not something you can depend on and neither are security guards and alarms. Question 41. What is the smallest allowable equipment grounding conductor going in conduit with 17 PV source circuits each with a short circuit current of 8A going in a single conduit to a combiner? 14AWG copper. 12AWG copper. 6AWG copper. 10AWG copper. Answer is A. 14AWG copper. There are two places we can look to answer this question. First, we will go to 690 part 5, grounding and bonding, then we will look in section 690.45, size of equipment grounding conductors. Here, it tells us that we should go to 250.122 and that the smallest that an equipment ground conductor can be is 14 AWG. Since the fuse size was not mentioned and we know that we need fuses when there are more than two strings in parallel at the DC combiner, then we will calculate the fuse size as 156% of ISC equals 8AX 1.56 equals 12.5A, which we will round up to the next common fuse size of 15A. 15A is a typical fuse size for a combiner. We can see the common fuse sizes at table 240.6A. Table 240.6A is new and we would have the same information in section 240.6 previously, but it is nicer to have a table. Question 42. What is the UL listing for inverters? 1703. 1741. 2703. 2741. Answer is B. 1741. UL1741 is for inverters, UL1741SA is special for inverters in California that offers more grid support, UL1703 is for PV, and UL2703 is for racking systems. Question 43. In which situation is a bonding jumper not required when connecting EMT to a junction box in a system with over 250 volts? When the EMT is aluminum. When using a weave. When there are ring knockouts. When there are no concentric knockouts. Answer is D. When there are no concentric knockouts. Article 250, Bonding and Grounding contains Part 5, Bonding, which contains Section 250.97, Bonding over 250 volts, which refers us to using the same methods as for services in Section 250.92b, Method of Bonding at the Service, except for, B1. 250.92, B, says, Bonding jumpers meeting the requirements of this article shall be used around impaired connections, such as reducing washers or oversized, concentric, or eccentric knockouts. Concentric definition, multiple circles sharing a center. Question 44. What is not an example of when an interactive inverter would be operating off the MPPT point of the fourth curve? Clipping. Overheating. STC operation. Reducing power output for a non-exporting system. Answer is C. STC operation. Anytime an interactive inverter reduces power, it will have to work off the fourth curve, unless it would be sending power somewhere else, so the best answer here is the situation where the inverter is an example of losing power, which is when it is operating at STC. Clipping is when you have more PV potential than the inverter can put out, so the inverter will have to work off the MPP. This is the same as when the inverter gets too hot, so it will not overheat and damage the inverter, the inverter will decrease power by working at a higher voltage and lower current than the MPP, thereby reducing heat in the inverter. Since current creates heat, the higher voltage will keep the inverter cooler. This is usually how an inverter will reduce power, in all of these cases is by moving to the right on the fourth curve. Also when an inverter has to reduce power because the utility will not allow exporting, it will reduce power by moving to the right on the fourth curve. On a question like this, 
beware of the word not and realize that three answers are things that will do what the question is asking. Question 45. Which is the best tool for checking for intermittent ground faults? Digital multimeter. Clamp on ammeter. Megometer. Two alligator clips and a jumper. Answer is C. Megometer. A megometer, otherwise known as a mega or an insulation tester, is best for checking for intermittent ground faults, because with an intermittent fault, the major fault is not usually there and the insulation tester can test the insulation. We would like millions of ohms of resistance in our insulation and, if we do not, then it can indicate that there is a problem or a potential problem. Question 46. PV system disconnects in different locations than the main service disconnect will need what? OSHA certification. A plaque or directory. UL 1703 listing. IEC label. Answer is B. A plaque or directory. If the disconnects are in different locations, they will need a plaque or directory, so that Phi RST responders and others will know that when they turn off the Phi RST switch, there are others to also turn off. Question 46. PV system disconnects in different locations than the main service disconnect will need what? OSHA certification. A plaque or directory. UL 1703 listing. IEC label. Answer is D. One foot from the array. 690.12b states that the conductors must be controlled outside of the array boundary. The array boundary is also defined here as being one foot from the array. If inside a building, then the conductors must be controlled within three feet of the entrance to the building. In the 2014 NEC, the correct answer would have been B, 10 feet from the array. The 2019 requirements of the 2017 NEC require what we call module level shutdown, which is 80 volts in 30 seconds inside of the array. Question 48. At 33 degrees latitude with a latitude minus 15 degrees tilt and peak sun hours at that tilt being 4.5, what would be the minimum KW system size needed to produce 75% of the energy if you considered a derating factor of 77%? Assume that the required amount of energy to be used is 9,000 kilowatt hours per year. 5.3 kilowatts. 7.1 kilowatts. 5.6 kilowatts. 11.2 kilowatts. Answer is A. 5.3 kilowatts. The numbers that we will use to answer this question are 4.5 PSH. 77% derating equals 0.77. 75% of energy to be made equals 0.75. 9,000 kilowatt hours per year to be used. The two things we are going to do are, phi RST, to determine how much energy we need to make and, second, to determine how much energy one kilowatt will make. Then, third, we will divide the energy we need to make into the energy one kilowatt will make to get our answer. First, 9000 kilowatt hours x 0.75 equals 6750 kilowatt hours per year we need to make. Second, 4.5 PSH x 0.77 derating x 365 days equals 1265 kilowatt hours slash k wp slash year. Third, 6750 kilowatt hours slash year slash 1265 kilowatt hours slash kwp slash year equals 5.34 kilowatts of pv is the answer question 49 battery room doors must open in the direction of egress never be locked always be locked have ventilation built into the door answer is a open in the direction of egress 480.10 Battery locations include section 480.10e, egress, which states a personnel doors intended for entrance to, and egress from, rooms designated as battery rooms shall be open in the direction of egress and shall be equipped with listed panic hardware. Battery rooms that contain lead acid batteries, which Article 480 evolved from, can be subject to explosion from hydrogen gas. These rooms containing lead acid batteries require ventilation, however, there is no requirement that the ventilation has to be from the door. Question 50. Which is not required by the NEC for a PV array installation? Grounding of 2703 listed rail systems. Lightning protection. Torque wrench is required by manufacturer's instructions. Module frames that are at ground voltage. Answer is B. Lightning protection. Lightning protection is not covered in the NEC, it is covered in NFPA 780.